All right, it looks like we are ready to go. Thank you all for joining us today for another edition of the Milwaukee Food School. Today we have our own co-host as our star for the program and she's going to uh, show us how she makes her summer salad. So I'm gonna hand it off to Andy and Jen. Enjoy everyone. Thanks so much. Um, thank you everyone for being here with us today. The Milwaukee Food School is delighted to host our community board president and extraordinary um, supporter of all things good, Jennifer Bordelato, who's gonna make some excellent uh, summer salad for us today. Um, I'm gonna let her tell you all about that, including where the primary ingredients for this salad came from and how we came to those. But um, first, just a reminder that the Milwaukee Food School is an organization dedicated to creating inclusivity around Milwaukee's community table. Um, we are looking to um, create more opportunities for conversations and overall food system solidarity. And we are just so excited to be able to host these sessions with Nuwaki and the Cloud Cafe, bringing some delicious goodness into your homes. So I'm gonna turn off my camera and turn it over to uh, Jennifer. Jennifer, thank you so much. Thanks Rita and Andy. Good afternoon, everybody. So before I get started, Andy and I are gonna continue this love fest for a second. My baby brother James is my videographer today, and Andy sent me these beautiful flowers earlier this week, um, which were so unexpected and such a nice little surprise. So Andy, I just wanted to publicly thank you. Um, if you've joined us before, and you've joined me before, a couple of things that um, are probably pretty obvious to you. The first being my hair. Um, I decided actually pre-COVID that I was going to return to my natural color and no longer color my hair. Um, time is a valuable and infinite um, gift to us, and so I've just decided that I'm no longer going to use it. Leave it easy. I'm no longer going to use it to color my hair. The second thing is, um, you will notice that I am in a different kitchen. I have moved to Milwaukee. I did that about eight weeks ago, and I'm going to take a quick second to recognize um, Bayview. I moved here to be closer to my family, and I could have never imagined how much uh, a community would impact me in such a short amount of time. Um, a special shout out to my neighbors, Mikey and his girlfriend, Mora, who um, if it weren't for them today, we wouldn't have our grilled corn. Across the street, we have uh, Emily and John, and if it weren't for them, I wouldn't have this wonderful zester and a great kitchen towel I'm gonna show you later but it's kind of like an adult dorm. Um, we yell at each other across balconies and over porches and everybody goes home at night, but I feel so loved and embraced. And um, if you are not part of a community and you're hurting right now, I can tell you that a sure way to healing is to connect with people. Um, do it in a way that's safe, do it in a way that makes you feel comfortable, but I cannot, I just can't tell you the value that I, um, place on the community that I've created in such a short amount of time in Bayview. All right, we're going to get started. So um, I put a call out, what do you want to learn about? And my dear friend uh, and patient friend, Serena Pollock threw out fennel. That's kind of an unusual request. So I chose that because of it's unusual. And several people wanted to know different things to do with corn. So actually the corn recipe that we're going to use is inspired by um, Mary, uh, Joe's daughter and my stepdaughter, whom I adore. It's a salad that she made for us a couple years ago that I'm twisting and turning a little bit. Um, but that's kind of the genesis for where this all started. So before we get going, just some basic reminders. Mise en place. It's a French cooking term and it means everything in its place. When we cook, time is important. And in order to maximize our time, the way that we do that, particularly in professional kitchens, is that you gather everything that you need in advance of beginning. So on this tray, I have all the ingredients that I need for the first salad that we're gonna make, which is the fennel salad. On this tray and in this bowl, I have all the ingredients that we're gonna need for the corn salad and the lime vinaigrette. I've also pulled out all the tools that I'm gonna use and they're all right here and easily accessible to me. The next reminder quickly for kitchen safety is how to use a cutting board. So. If you're going to use a cutting board, a wooden one particularly, or a plastic one, you don't want it moving on you when you're cutting with a sharp knife. So if you put down a wet cloth, I've gone to reusable, washable, um, kind of like handy wipes that um, actually last far longer than the package said they would, so that's great. And then I have the knives. Typically, I've only used one knife for you. Um, today, we're gonna be using three. So I'm gonna use a standard chef knife, 
I'm gonna be using a boning knife. Um, you don't have to have a boning knife, but you'll see why this works. It's a very flexible blade, so unlike the chef knife that has no give to it, the boning knife, because it's used to bone um, fish and meat, has a lot of give to the blade, and I'll show you why that's important later. And this is an old relic. Um, this is a small serrated knife. Uh, and I bought this back in the day when I worked at Charlie Trotter's and I had to use, um, <laughs> had to do some really fine knife skills and this was an important tool to have at the time. So those are the three knives that we're gonna be using. All right, let's get started. I'm gonna put these off to the side for a second. This salad is uh, what in fancy terms would be called a composed salad, meaning we're not gonna toss it all together like we're gonna do with the second one, but we are gonna compose this with intention so that it is very visually appealing to us. So the first thing that we're gonna do is I'm gonna grab a platter and um, we're gonna begin you working with the fennel. This is a mandolin. Um, there are all kinds of different versions of this. I'm a big fan and I know I'm probably not supposed to say this, but I do like to promote the things that I've found that I love. This it, mandolin is from OXO. And so when you buy this, you will get it the legs fold down like this for easy storage. And then you put the legs up and then this knob here raises and lowers the blade. It also offers you um, the ability to make like a julienne. We're not gonna do that today. We're just gonna use the traditional braid. And I want it pretty thin. So I'm gonna put that up pretty high and we'll see how it goes. This is fennel. Um, and so this is what a fennel bulb looks like and how you get it at the store. Fennel um, has an anise flavor to it and I am going to trim it for today. Now all of this could go into a stock. You could cut this up and throw it into a different salad. These fronds, um, actually I wasn't going to but I will. I'll show you how to use these fronds on the salad when we finish it. So I'm gonna just set these off to the side then you take your mandolin. Now the thing about the mandolin is this blade is as sharp as a knife. And so when you get, when I get down low, I'm gonna use this and I'll show you how to do that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just start passing the fennel over the mandolin. And you can see, no matter how good your knife skills are, you'd be pretty hard pressed to make them that thin, that consistently, which is why you wanna use something like the mandolin. Um, could I make a couple of cuts that way? Absolutely. Could I cut this whole thing that thin? Probably not. Um, it would take a tremendous amount of skill and patience, and quite frankly, it would be a waste of time. So I don't trust myself. If this were to slip, I would slice my finger open and end up getting stitches at the hospital. So if you'll see, this has little knobbies on it, and you literally stab this, and then you take this up and down the mandolin, so that you can get down to the core, which is where I am. All right, so that is our fennel. I'm gonna put the mandolin off to the side. And then what we wanna do is we are gonna compose this salad. So I am going to layer the fennel first. And so that you weren't bored watching me do two of them, I went ahead and did this one early. I did this about two hours ago and you can see that it oxidized just a little bit, but it's not brown enough to cause concern or to make it look un inedible by any means. I put a little uh, wet paper towel, so you could do the same if you were gonna prep this ahead of time. This is also best if you make it about an hour before you wanna eat it and you serve this at room temperature. So now we have our fennel. And then the next thing that we're going to do is um, our oranges. And listen to me. I talked to you about mise en place and being prepared and I forgot an orange. I'll be right back. So just a reminder while she's grabbing that orange, if anyone has any questions, if you're watching on Facebook Live, you can post them right into the Facebook chat. Um, it looks like we have a question, Jen, and it's what yep. do you look for when purchasing these ingredients? Is it quality, organic? Where do you personally purchase? So uh, I believe garbage in, garbage out. And um, to the extent that you can afford to buy produce from the person that you know, grow it yourself or purchase organic from a store, I do. Um, in my old home, I had a very large garden. I grew a lot of my own and that's just not the case for me anymore. And so I like to support Outpost. Um, I also support the South Shore Farmers Market. 
And then I just found out about a company that's not new, but it was new to me called Brewers Organics. And I have signed up to get, it's uh, kind of like a CSA, but not because you have choices about what can go in your box. So shout out to Brewers Organic. It's a locally owned company by a couple who have some children and they were concerned about having access to good quality produce. And so they've begun it and I get my first box next week. So I try to support local most uh, best I can. Um, and what you want to do is just look for produce that, that you would want to eat. So um, these fronds are really pretty vibrantly green. None of it looks like it's starting to um, lose its form or its shape or its water. So it's not dried out. Um, citrus fruit can be hit or miss at this time of year, but I've had good luck at Outpost with it. So um, here's the navel orange. Now we're going to use this boning knife, the flexible one. So what you want to do is you want to cut off the top and the bottom. Remember when you have a rolly surface and that's a bad orange. Grab another one. So another question coming in from Facebook. Um, yeah. Viewers want to know where you get that incredible apron from. <laughs> <laughs> I, the, whoever asked the question, thank you. Um, I bought my niece Caitlin and I matching aprons for Christmas. I don't know, five or six years ago, and I found a woman online from Dallas. I, can, I will look before this is over and see if there's a tag on it, but um, I was going to put my, my, you know, super serious denim apron on today, and I thought, you know what? Let's not. Let's do something fancy. Okay, so back to our orange. So if you have something that's really like this, hard to cut, what we want to do is create surfaces that are going to be stable for us. So I'm going to cut off the bottom. I'm going to cut off the top. And then I'm going to set it on a flat surface, like so. So now with this boning knife, if I had my chef knife, it would only allow me to cut straight down. My boning knife is actually going to allow me to follow the shape of the orange around because the blade is flexible. And I can maneuver it in there, and I can get off all of the peel. And you want to get off most of the white pith um, because that's what is bitter. Now. You could save this and make a mean Negroni with these peels later. You could have zested this before cutting it off if you needed orange zest for something, um, which is great on a lot of things. I didn't need it today, so I didn't take it off. But you could do all of that. Jamie actually might want one in his drink, huh? There you go, man. All right. It also makes a great cleaner if you put some inside some vinegar and for those of you who like a zero waste life, orange peel is a I did not know that about orange. I knew that about lemon. Thanks, Andy. Of course. Um, okay, so now what we want to do is we just want to cut thin slices of this orange. And this is a really nice, juicy one. Looks beautiful. Yeah, it does. So I'm not big with rules in cooking, I'm a savory cook not a sweet cook, uh, not a pastry cook. If you are working with pastry and baking, there are absolutely rules you should follow them. But if you don't like oranges and you wanna try grapefruit, go for it. Um, you know, they're just, do what sounds good to you. So now we're back to our composition and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of pull these segments apart and I'm gonna loosely uh, place them on top of the fennel. So I had two bulbs of fennel, so it's two and two. Two bulbs of fennel, two oranges. Making me hungry. All right, and then the next thing that we're gonna put on here, that's one orange. I probably am not gonna use, I did ahead of time so you didn't have to watch me cut all this up. Probably not gonna use the whole rest of that second one. A little bit too much orange. So use your eye, right? Like cooking shouldn't be so militant that you you look at this and go, well, she said two and two, but it looks like enough to me, or I don't want more orange than that. Good enough. So then the next thing that's going to go on is Kalamata olives. Um, by accident, I've been ordering my groceries online, and by accident, I had ordered whole ones, but they sent me ones that were already sliced, which is kind of awesome. So I'm not slicing them for you. But I bought pitted Kalamatas. They came in halves. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sprinkle those randomly on here. 
So this salad is vegan. Actually, both salads we're going to make today are vegan. You could, you could add shaved parm to this, and that would be great um, if you wanted to add some cheese to it, or you can leave it as is. Um, it would probably be great with grilled shrimp on it. Um, not, not, I've always eaten it like this, um, but you could probably add some grilled shrimp to it too. And then, oh. sorry, Andy, go ahead. Yep, we've got a, a question from MK of the Whisk Chick, right? Um, she's watching today. Hey, thanks. thanks for being here. Um, she wants to know where you got the oranges and says, sorry if she missed it already, but they look amazing, which they certainly do. Outpost. They came oh. from Outpost, Andy. Okay, Outpost. I will put that in the, in the Q&A in Facebook. Okay, now the next thing that we are going to do is we are going to julienne very, very finely mint, which makes this the nice, refreshing summer salad that it is. So the way to julienne leafy herbs is to make a stack, kind of if you've ever seen cigars rolled, um, that's pretty much what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna make a stack like so, doesn't have to be perfect, and you wanna roll it tightly. And then I cut off the top end, and then you just literally shave this. And then you end up with these beautiful little slivers of the herb. So now this is gonna go on here. Looks amazing, all that bright color and. Yeah, I like to eat with my eyes too. And now there's a lot, there's a reasonable amount of salt in these olives, um, but it's not gonna be enough for the entire salad. So I am gonna salt this. I will give you that food is usually a vehicle for me just to get more salt into my mouth, but I've been trying to watch it a little bit. So I'm not gonna do a liberal salting of this. I'm just gonna do enough to kind of cover all of it. Um, and then I'm going to do some fresh cracked pepper. Um, this is a pepper mill that was a gift to me about 35 years ago that came from Istanbul, a friend traveled and brought it back. And it's one of my um, most prized possessions. You can see it's well loved in my kitchen. It's and very then beautiful. the last and final ingredient, um, this is also a coveted item in my kitchen. My brother-in-law Paul um, knows more about Italy than I think people who are actually born in Italy. And he's very passionate about all things Italy and he made the mistake of introducing me to really fine um, small producers of olive oil. So every time Paul would go to Italy, I would beg him to bring me cans of olive oil back and, and buy a can of olive oil, they're small. They come in tiny cans like this. So this is not something you would ever, ever cook with. This is something for finishing. This, if you were to buy, would be very expensive. And I'll talk to you a little bit about a different type of oil later, but this oil is reserved for exactly what I'm going to do to it. We are going to top a salad with it and it is going to impart a flavor, you know, with olive oil, honestly, it's one of those things you get what you pay for. Um, it, it truly is. And there's a lot of rogue olive oil out there that really isn't olive oil. So to the extent that you can invest in an olive oil, um, that's on the more expensive end, just use it for finishing like this for a salad. So voila, you have this salad. And then if you wanted to um, add some green to it, you could always, um, people, so people would know that it was fennel coming. You could always garnish it with the fennel if you wanted. So there's salad number one. It's gorgeous. We have one question about that salad from Facebook. Um, yep. It comes from Mike who wants to know, other than aesthetics, is there a reason to make a salad, a composed salad versus tossing it together? No, just aesthetics. I like to eat with my eyes, and I think this one looks really pretty when it's done like this. Beautiful. All right, salad number one done. I'm going to wipe off my cutting board. Andy, any other questions? Nope, just someone wants, uh, wanted you to know that the, the comment you made that food is a vehicle for you to get salt into your mouth. They can feel that. <laughs> <laughs> um, love the sparkly apron. Lots of love for that apron. Um, mm -hmm. The only other question I had was, in part, is it the fact that you need a little less salt as well because of the brine from the olives or? The brine of the olives. So another yeah. change, um, in my other house, I had lots of room to um, make a nice quiet spot for my three golden retrievers. So you hear Izzy barking because uh, she's learning to be a city dog. So I've got my animals with me, which not much brings me more happiness than that, but that's the barking that you hear in the background. Okay, 
So now on to the corn salad. So cooking is, if you want to eat healthy and you want to try to avoid fats, then what you have to do is find ways to intensify flavors as an ingredient. So I could have just boiled the corn and put it in here, but two things would have happened. One, the corn would have been a little waterlogged. And two, I would have missed the opportunity to caramelize it. So my, my neighbor, Mikey, uh, was kind enough to meet me in his backyard. He's got this big daddy Viking professional grill that um, I'm not jealous of, but I'm certainly envious of, and I've been the recipient of his cooking on it. And it's fantastic. So he met me yesterday afternoon and we grilled this corn. So what happens when you grill the corn is I'm dehydrating it, which inherently will intensify the flavor of the corn. And it's also going to give us this nice little char, um, which will bring an interesting flavor to it as opposed to having just boiled it. Um, it'll, that little caramelization is going to give, you, give your mouth something interesting to remember about this salad. So the way that I did this, Corn can be really messy when you're cutting it off the cup. So we put this on the grill. Um, there's no oil on it. There's no butter on it. There, I didn't wet it. I didn't soak it. Low and slow on the grill. It took us probably 15 minutes or so, turning every couple of minutes to get the corn to look like this. The easiest way to get it off is to do it in a bowl. So again, my boning knife, which is flexible, and it'll follow the cob as opposed to fighting against the cob. I'm going to just go around. Hey, Andy, how am I doing on time? The time is now 1225. Okay. I'm going to turn it around like this, and that's going to get the corn off the cob. Now, if you compost, um, the corn cobs can go right into your compost. Andy, do you have any suggestions for co cor uh, cobs other than compost? Yes. <laughs> As a matter of <laughs> fact, <laughs> I think you know it. I make a um, really great corn stock in the pressure cooker and it's delicious. And for people who are vegan or veg, it makes a fantastic, creamy, um, just really unctuous vegetable stock. I do have one question going back to the fennel salad from Facebook. Yep. Um, what would be some other bases if someone doesn't like fennel? Could we do it's shredded cabbage or? You yeah. could, sure, you could use uh, like a Napa cabbage or a bok choy cabbage. Um, I would use a, you could use radicchio. Um, and then I would probably switch to a green olive as opposed to the purple olive so that you're not competing with colors and it's more complementary. Um, but if you're not a fan of the fennel, um, you could use any, any of those things. I wouldn't use like a hard red cabbage or a green cabbage. Um, not that it would be bad. I think it would just be better with cabbages that their leaves are a little bit more cellulose and not quite so rigid. Thank you so much. Um, Yep. Okay. So we're, this is a one bowl salad. Um, I have two cans of black beans that I have rinsed and drained. Then we are going to add scallions. So um, we're going to take the ends off the scallions and these bulbs, the bulb is the white part, um, are a little bit bigger than I would want as a bite in my mouth. And so I will show you what to do with those. I've already washed these, which is why I'm not doing it right now. So what I do, you see that there are, it grows in layers. So this is a layer, this is a layer, this is a layer. What I'm gonna do is kind of follow the line down and I'm going to just cut it in half. And then when we go to cut these into our dices, we won't end up with such a large bite of onion in our mouth. So what we wanna do, I like to cut on the bias. And I've already trimmed them, so I can go all the way to the end. When you cut them on the bias, um, it gives them an interesting, you can see, it looks more interesting, I think. It's personal preference. Not a requirement for sure. So um, again, I didn't want you to have to watch me cut out a bunch of onions, so I pre-did those. Then we have um, cherry tomatoes. I, other than heirloom tomatoes, I have to say, I've been really disappointed with tomatoes of late. And what I've found is um, these grape tomatoes. So they're not cherry tomatoes, they're called grape tomatoes. This is the only thing I can find on the market until the heirlooms arrive that actually tastes like a tomato to me. So what I wanna do is I wanna take my serrated knife 
You could use a chef knife, but actually when they're this small, it is a lot easier to use a serrated knife. If you don't have this, don't go buy one. You can use a bread knife. Any other serrated knife that you might have, you might have a serrated paring knife, that, that's fine too. So I grab either side of it and I slice it and I turn it uh, 90 degrees and I cut it again and there you go. So I've quartered my cherry tomatoes. Those are going in here. That's a great tip for knife safety too, right? Just to kind of rotate rather than trying to get them cut on their bias. Yep. Here, we, got, we have a little challenge. We have a two and a half year old that just woke up. So we're gonna go hit, get him and uh, make this camera work. Andy, can you see me? No, it's right in between. We're coming, Harry. Sorry, everybody. Oh, sorry, I was chatting with okay. you on mute. Um, I can see the cutting board perfectly. Okay, so now the next thing I'm gonna add is uh, fresh chopped cilantro. And I kind of do it like I do the mint a little bit. I'm gonna cut the first bit off. I'm gonna add that back in here. And then I'm gonna just grab it together like so. And I'm gonna slice it almost as thinly as I slice the mint. And um, because I'm making, uh, this salad would easily feed eight. Um, I'm making a bigger batch than normal. So if you're doing it on your own, you can half the uh, ingredients in this and end up with a salad that would feed four. The fennel salad is perfect for four. All right. Um, and then we're gonna add some spice. So I'm gonna add a jalapeno pepper. I'm gonna cut off the top. I'm gonna cut this in half. And then I'm gonna take out the seeds. This is where the heat is. I'm just gonna push this off to the side of my board. Um, and once you get the seeds out, you've gotten out uh, most of what is going to have the oil in it that will create all of that heat for you. Now, you can get one of these that is not hot at all, and you can get one that's gonna set your world on fire. So before I start cutting a bunch of it, what I always do is I cut myself a little bite of it. Um, I test the heat level. Um, this one's pretty medium. So we're gonna do a reasonable amount. I'm probably gonna do this whole half, given that I've got that much salad. So I'm cutting thin strips. You're not gonna want a big bite of this in, and I want the heat to be able to be dispersed throughout the entire salad. So we wanna cut um, really, really, in French technical term, it's a brunoise, a tiny little um, square. So we just want the tiniest little dice. Almost like a confetti cut, right? Like it's that's yep. about the size of it for people who can't see up close. And then that's gonna go in. All right, now I say to put the avocado in, but I've changed my mind because avocado bruises easily. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna make the vinaigrette and we'll toss the avocado in at the very last. So in order to make the vinaigrette, um, I start first with the acid. I like vinaigrettes that are half acid, half oil. Not everybody does, that's too much acid for some people. You have to decide what works for you. You might like a little bit more acid, you might like a little bit more oil, entirely up to you. So back to my friends at Ursa, is this not the cutest little juicer you've ever seen in your life? So, <laughs> With um, citrus, when you're gonna juice it, you want to put your weight down on it and roll it, and that will break up the fibers. And once the fibers are broken up, it will be easier to juice it. So I've got a pretty big salad here. I'm going to do um, the zest of two limes and the juice of three. So I'm not gonna zest this one. Any Is it question? Okay if I ask a couple questions from the audience yes, while you're doing that? So, yep. um, Jill Moross says, I've done a similar salad using blood oranges for a deeper orange, almost red color that, for that first fennel salad. Thank you, Jill. Um, Aya says, do you have a trick to get the silk off of the corn? Mine came right off. I don't. I okay. get frustrated <laughs> running underwater. <laughs> Fair enough. And then Susan, who says, former employee of Bordelada, wants to know if she missed you grilling the corn with the husks on or off, and if you drizzled with olive oil. I know you said your neighbor grilled the corn for you, but what do you recommend? Husks on or husks off? 
husks off because I want that caramelization on it. With a husk on, I wouldn't get it. So I um, husk them and put them on the grill completely uh, naked with no oil. Okay. So if Thank I were so gonna, make, yep. If I were gonna make the vinaigrette um, ahead of time, I would put the zest into the jar where I'm gonna. Um, I'm going to use this jar to make my vinaigrette, but since I'm in, we're going into it and we're doing it right away, I'm going to put the zest right in there. So this is a microplane. This is like one of the best tools. If you were going to invest in something other than a great cutting board and a great chef knife, this is the bomb. It's great for it's how I'm going to do my garlic. It's great for getting zest off of citrus fruit. It is great for grating cheese really finely. So think something like a Parmesan. And the reason that you use the zest, again, I try not to cook with a ton of fat. And so if you haven't, if we haven't satisfied the mouth with things other than fat, then you're going to be left feeling like, eh, it was all right, but I probably wouldn't make that again, or I probably wouldn't order that again. And so you have to think about how you're going to layer flavors in. So there's the zest of two lime. Now I'm going to go back to juicing. Any other questions? Not at this time. Quiet group today, Andy. I think everyone's mesmerized by the beauty of your salad making skills because it's just like the perfect day for a salad. Well, it's and so this good. Also, a vegan salad. Um, if you don't like black beans, I've made this salad with pinto beans. You could certainly use garbanzo beans or chickpeas. All right, one more lime, and then we'll be moving on. So the beauty of this cute little zester there, while there have been no seeds in this lime, is it also catches all the seeds. One of my more recent kitchen acquisitions, but I just love it. Okay, so here's how this works. I start with the acid. Now I like an equal amount of olive oil. And so I'm gonna eyeball it and say that I'm gonna take the olive oil up to about that rim. So for a salad like this, where there are lots of flavors going on, it doesn't, it would be a waste to use that really expensive olive oil. But that said, this bottle of olive oil at Whole Foods, I think was about $25. Um, I don't cook with this. I only use this olive oil to finish a salad or to mix in a vegetable or if I've steamed a vegetable or to make a vinaigrette. So in's gonna go the olive oil. We have a question about how you keep salads fresh after you dress them. Um, this salad will still be good tomorrow and probably the next day. Um, and that is true of salads that don't have things like lettuce in them. But when you start using lettuce, radicchio, um, spinach, any of those greens in a salad, once you've dressed it, the vinegar, the acid, uh, the acid in the whatever you're using, whether it's a vinegar or your citrus, is going to start to bring down, break down the fibers of the lettuce and it's going to wilt and it's going to leach out all the water and make kind of, we've all looked at a salad after it's been sitting for a while. The beauty of this salad is you could actually make all of this in the morning, dress it in the afternoon. It would be great for dinner. And it would be great. I probably wouldn't, I maybe would make it ahead the whole day ahead, but not dress it and then dress it the day of. So you could have everything ready and then just toss it at the last minute. Um, but they're best about an hour into it. So the best of your ability, um, put it all together, mix it, let it sit for an hour and then enjoy it. We had um, one other question too about the brand of the $25 olive oil at Whole Foods. Is that Whole Foods brand or is that a different brand? It is not. It is Goda. Gotcha. Okay. I'll type that into the chat. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so at uh, the South Shore Farmer's Market a couple weeks ago, garlic is in, um, or at least it was that weekend, and there was a vendor who had these mammoth cloves of elephant garlic, and I was so excited to have fresh garlic. I used to grow my own, um, so I was so excited to have fresh garlic, I brought it. So I'm not going to use all this. Um, nobody would want to eat my salad, but we're going to probably use about half of it. And again, I use this microplane and I'll show you what's going to happen. You don't want a bite of garlic in your mouth in a salad. And so there's a French culinary technique term called creaming. 
Um, and this, this microplane does the same thing without all the work of creaming. So we're gonna put that in. And then we are going to put in a liberal amount of salt because if you think about it, we have an awful lot there to season. Liberal. And then I, it's no secret, I'm a big fan of Penzi's and I like to add a little bit of a kick to the salad. So I'm using their bold taco seasoning and I'm, eh, I've got that much left in there and we're just gonna do it. So these little jars are great for this, shake it. Now you should always taste it before you drop that much food because you wanna know that you've not overdone or underdone an ingredient, so I will do that. It's really flavorful, really flavorful, but it's got a lot of salad to dress. I'm gonna start off with about half of it. Best tool in the kitchen is your hands. I'm gonna to toss this. So it's pretty well tossed. And then I'm gonna add my avocado last because it bruises easily. So I'm gonna show you how to cut the next one, but while my hands are messy, I'm gonna go ahead and do this. So I've sliced it in half, and then I have created these little squares of it. And I'll show you how to do that in one second. If you keep the pit in the avocado, it will not oxidize. It'll keep that beautiful color. So I did this about nine o'clock this morning. Can right. you share how you pick avocados for ripeness? Because yeah. we know that's the great trick, right? Is to find the right one. So it depends on when you're going to be using it. Um, I, as I mentioned, I don't like shopping, but it was important to me to have produce that was really fresh in the way I wanted it for today. So I did go to the store yesterday and I chose these myself. So I chose, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this. It gives just a little bit when I push it. If it doesn't give a little bit, it's not ready. If it gives a lot, it's probably overripe. And when you cut it, you're gonna end up with brown inside. So the way to do it is to cut it in half. You twist the halves if you cut it all the way through. And then with a paring knife, fourth knife, with a paring knife, you're just gonna cut cross hatches in it. So I'm gonna cut it horizontally and vertically, like so. Now to get the pit out, um, the safe way to do it would be to rest this and pluck it out like that. Sometimes it's in there a little bit harder. Um, and then I would recommend taking a spoon up and under it. You will absolutely on cooking shows see chefs do this, but I have seen the best chefs um, end up with a horrible accident as a result of doing that. All right, so. Do you have time for a couple more questions? Yep, have at it. A couple of questions and two comments. First, Jessie says she loves those uh, jam jars. She uses them as well, and they're great for picnic cocktails or wine. Thank you, Jesse. Um, James says his personal belief when it comes to olive oil is that if the harvest date is not on the bottle, don't buy it. If it's more than a year past harvest, you can use it to oil the grill, but not dress the salad. Um, <laughs> Brooke wants to know what the brand of the microplane is. Did you say it's OXO or is that? Uh, this uh, is, it's just called micro, oh wait, hang on. Microplane blade made in the USA. I, I bet microplane is a brand. Microplane is a brand, yep. And yeah. we can certainly post that into the chat as well. And then Melissa said the dressing, just so she has the notes, lime, lime zest, olive oil, garlic, salt, taco seasoning. Did she miss anything? Nope, that's it. That's it. Thank you okay, so much. So I put the avocados in last because they're delicate. And if I put them in earlier, they would kind of get mushy. And I don't want to do that. I want everything to look like it's in its real form. So it's identifiable. And then our salad is done. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer it over here. You could put this in a bowl. You could put it on this platter. You could add any protein that you wanted to this. You could add cheese to this. Any of the Mexican cheeses would be great on this. Um, there, the, a white cojita cheese would be great on top of this. And there you have it, two vegan summer salads. Any questions, Andy? No new questions. 
Um, everything looks incredible. We're at two minutes before quarter two, so we're at 1243. Um, any final comments for us as we kind of close out before we dig into the picnic with you? No, I think the only thing I'd like to say to all of you about cooking is have a good time. You know, um, it, it shouldn't, I understand that it can be really intimidating, um, but it's really hard to go wrong if you're not baking. Um, and if you don't like it, don't make it again. But experiment. Um, you don't like black beans, use garbanzo beans. You don't like corn, don't put corn in it at all. You don't like the flavor of grilled, don't do grilled. You don't like avocado, leave the avocado out. Put red pepper in. You don't like tomatoes, take the tomatoes out. Um, experiment and play with it. You don't like lime juice, try lemon juice. Um, you don't like cilantro, um, put parsley in it. You know, it's definitely gonna change the flavor profile, but it would still be great. And um, I think that, you know, in this day and age when some of us, not all of us, certainly some of us are working more, but I know a lot of us have more time than we've had in a long time. Um, there's nothing like being able to make your own food and satisfy all your senses as a result of having done that. Um, it's very satisfying for me. I ran into one of my new neighbors this morning and she asked what I was doing today. I told her I was going to do this. She said, ah, you got to stop working. And I said, actually, this is not work for me. Um, cooking never feels like work. It's always very cathartic for me. And I love being able to share it with people that I care very much about. Um, so that's it. Thank you I so much you for joining me today. Um, if you try these salads, I hope you enjoy them. I'd love to hear about it. Um, I posted the recipes on my blog and they're also on my Instagram and LinkedIn. So, so thanks getting, for joining us. Getting a lot of thank yous. Thank you, Jennifer, so much. Um, Susan says you can feel your passion through cooking. Thank you for sharing your heart with us. It's great being here with you. Um, she can't wait to see you in person. I know everyone is very grateful, as am I. Um, we have another request for you to take that apron off and see if it has a tag. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and while you're doing that, I'll just say thank you again. Um, we are going to have two more sessions in this series that we're super excited about. And Jennifer and I will be hosting Alexa and Matt Alfaro of Meat on the Street next. And after that, the session after that will be Jason Alston with Heaven's Table Barbecue. Um, so watch for signups for that. But again, just on behalf of uh, the Milwaukee Food School, Jennifer, this has been extraordinary. I love working with you so much and just adore you. And thank you for spending your time with us today. So um, thanks for having Andy. So it's called Hout, H-A-U-T-E, Hostess Aprons. Um, and back when I bought it, there was a website. I don't know if she's still in business, um, but Hout Hostess Aprons. Perfect. Thank and you. I'll put that in the... My niece got a hot pink one. So together we were the, we were the show that year for Christmas. That's awesome. It has a little ruffle on the bottom too, doesn't it? <laughs> That's amazing. Okay. Thank you. Rita, we'll kick it back over to you. Thanks everybody. Awesome. Thank you all for joining us. And thank you so much to Jen, of course, and Andy, and even Jamie, our cameraman for the day. Um, Watching you make those salads was really fun. I could watch you cook all day. Um, as Andy mentioned, we have two more of these programs coming up. You can sign up for the Milwaukee newsletter to find out um, more information on those. Thank you to North Shore Bank. They are a sponsor of our Cloud Cafe. We have a lot of other programs happening as well. So again, you can find out about those on Milwaukee.com or you can sign up for our newsletter. Thank you all so much and have a good rest of your week and weekend.